Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to do another iris swipe. So behind me here, you'll see the um, the rainbow iris swipe I did really recently. Um, my only comment about it was that the, sw the cells were absolutely tiny. Let me show you, in fact, if I go close up. Really loved it, but really, really tiny cells. So I'm going to do exactly the same again, but I'm going to go for runnier paints um, in the hope that I'm going to get larger cells. So exactly the same, a rainbow in exactly the same order, um, but thinner paints to try and get bigger cells. So let's get started. So the canvas I'm using is 50 centimetres by 40 centimetres. I'm just, I've just got a wood round here and I'm just going to draw around that for my pupil. Um, I just need to make sure that it's right in the centre. Right, so I wanted a thinner consistency for these paints. So I've mixed them, they're mixed with PVA glue and water pouring medium, which I mixed two parts PVA glue to one part water. I then added, th I then mixed three to two, so three parts pouring medium to two parts paint. And then I've added some water, but I didn't measure the water. I've basically just added a squirt of water to get it to roughly this consistency. So it's leaving a trail, but I hope you can see that it's only lasting for less than a second. It's really not lasting very long at all. So this is quite a bit thinner than um, the previous painting I did. Um, the reason I, I can't really give a measurement for the water is because all paints have different consistencies. So it, it isn't the same for every paint. Every brand of paint, every colour of paint has a different consistency. So you have to put in some water to them all and then just compare them and it's to do with the feel you can try and feel how fluid it is measure the trace check for the mound um, and then the other thing i've done is added some coconut hair serum for the oil into each of the colors because it's going to be a swipe so i need to create um, some cells with the oil I've just changed um, the container that all my paints are in. I've just put them into little paper cups. If you use a plastic cup, you can't pinch it. So you just can't get such nice um, round motions as you pour it. Other thing I'm going to do is just measure and do some draw some more circles on so I can try and get the circles to be as concentric as possible. So that's my pupil. So if I just do some measurements, any measurements it really doesn't matter so if I did sort of three three so every three centimeters So I've just drawn on lots of circles. I think it's really worth spending the time doing that because you think otherwise you think you're going to pour in a beautiful circle. But I have found that I've ended up skewing and it's, it's just not worked. So I've ended up with a massive corner here and a smaller corner here. It just doesn't end up completely concentric. Um, so it's just worth spending the time doing that. You won't see it. And it's it's just a rough guide to get the circles as as neat as possible. So I'm now just going to be pouring around um, around as much as I can around that shape. I'll leave some gaps to start with because I will fill those in afterwards.
Right, I'm ready to start swiping. Um, I've just cut up lots of pieces of kitchen roll. Um, so I'm going to use that to swipe. So each time I swipe, I'm going to get the piece of paper, just the kitchen roll, just slightly wet. If I just swipe now, it would probably work, but it might not stick very well. And I just think to get better contact on the um, paint, I'm just making it damp on the ends. I'm just dab dabbing my dipping my finger in some water and then just dabbing the piece of kitchen roll um, with some water. So I think I'm going to start, every time I swipe, I'm going to start swipe as if I'm coming from the centre, um, which is there. So let's just swipe outwards first. So I'm just touching it into that pink and then just quite slowly dragging it. Like that. So now I'm just going to go in with some smaller swipes. Um, I'm going to start where the paint hasn't blended yet. And I'm going to start um, swiping with the corner of the, of the piece of kitchen roll this time, just so I don't get blunt straight lines. And I'm going to make them wiggly. I added some wiggly lines in my last one and I really liked the effect of it. Right, I have finished putting the paint on. Um, I finished with my wiggly lines. You can see my pupil is totally distorted, but it just doesn't matter in the slightest because when it's dry, I will hand paint that. So it really doesn't matter. So now for the fun bit, the torching. So I'm hopeful that I'm gonna get some larger cells because there are a few larger cells that have already popped up. So I just want got to be so careful not to over torch. So here goes. Oh, actually, just had an idea. I think I might torch in lines. That's what I did for the last one. And that worked really well to try and get these sort of radial effects. Let's do that. Um, where do I start? Let's just see what happens. So I can see exactly where I've torched, which means I can see exactly where I haven't torched. <laughs> so I'm going to now go and torch again, 
just very gently, very lightly in the places where I haven't torched, but in, again, in the lines. I might start from the outside. Right, I am now going to walk away for five minutes, go and put the kettle on and come back. So I am not tempted to touch this. So it's several minutes later and wow, it's worked. I've got much bigger cells. I think the problem I have is I torch so much that you get all these cells and they've just got nowhere to expand to. So the cells just don't get the opportunity to develop. Whereas by torching a bit less and then walking away and coming back, these cells have had the chance to, to expand. So now I know there are an odd few gaps, but not much. So to start with, I thought there's still lots of gaps, but there isn't because the cells have occupied those gaps. Um, why, I want to just do a couple of extra torches though, very cautiously. I'd quite like to torch in here to try and see if there's any of that pale pink underneath this um, darker pink. Just to break, because that's quite, the, the, the colour that's around the pupil is always a much more solid block of colour. So yeah, there's just a few cropping up there. And then there is just the odd patch that just looks slightly bare. So just very gently, I'm just going to try and torch in there. Yep, so I've got some cells popping up in those two places. Right, I'm a bit concerned that that black is seeping into the colour. So I'm actually just going to remove some of this black because I'm, I'm going to add it on again afterwards. I'm worried it's pushing on my pink and I'm worried it's going to keep, keep pushing and then go over the, these beautiful colours. So I'm just going to remove it so that the pink can then flow back in towards the pupil, pupil. In fact, I might try and pull that pink back the other way. So I'm just going to go straight in for a close up just to show you all these cells. So they are just so much larger than the original one. So I think it just means that when you stand back from a distance, you can see more of the detail. The other one I absolutely love, but the cells are so small, you only really see them when you get up close. Whereas with this one, you're definitely going to see them um, from if it's hanging on a wall from the other side of the wall, the other side of the room, sorry. So you'll see them much from further away. Um, now, at this point, I can see the different consistencies in these paints, because if you look at the turquoise, you can see that the turquoise cells are much larger and more distorted. So I think that paint was thinner than, for example, this purple and this pink, because the cells are smaller and much better defined, much more, much more um, defined. I think the yellow might be a bit thin as well because you've got just, they're just a bit more irregular. It doesn't matter in the slightest, but they're a bit more irregular. Um, so it's just interesting. You've got this band, um, I think this blue band and the sort of orange and yellow band where they just look a little bit more, um, yeah, just a bit more distorted. Um, but just, wow, if I stand back, well, I will, I'll show you when it's dry. You can just see the details. Oh, I am so happy with this. Right, I'll be back when it's dry. It's now totally dry. I love it, absolutely love it. I just can't stop looking at the brightness and the, it's just so bright and vivid and that just makes me feel happy and I smile at bright colors. Um, so yeah, just so, so pleased with it. The cells, yeah, if I stand back, um, you can really see the size of the cells. Um, but then if I get up close, you've got the larger cells, but also the smaller cells um, for contrast. Um, the purples have got slightly lost. Um, I was looking back and they're there, but not as obvious as some of the other colours. So the blue, the, uh, turquoises and greens are much more obvious. 
and yeah the yellow oranges and reds um yeah just so so pleased with the the boldness of it um one question mark i have let me show you what i've done to the edges so the edges had all these beautiful drips um, but the rest of the edges were bare. So if you can see, I have just painted black the bits in between the drips. Let me show you up the top here. That might be easier for you to see. Um, can you see, I've just painted these. This was all bare canvas. So I've painted them black to try and show off those drips. I'll show you down here all the way around. So I think that looks quite nice. I think it looks quite striking, but I don't know if it looks neat enough. Um, I'm not sure actually if it would be better to have a solid border to match the pupil um, or these edges. Let me know what you think because I can paint over it. I could still do my solid border. Oh, sorry, there's a chip on the floor there. I just made sweet potato chips. There you go, it's part of my lunch. <laughs> or was. Um, right, I want to now show you um, the other painting as well. Let me just move it in. So this is the original painting so i've got them side by side so they're different size canvases um so this is the original with the smaller cells this is the this this video with the larger cells um but i want to show you the border because the, on this one i painted the border so what looks best do you think a sharp solid painted border or the drips i just don't know let me show you the top again um, so yeah, the brightly coloured drips or the nice sharp dark edge to it. I really don't know what to do with this one, whether to leave it like this or not. So please let me know. Keep the drips or paint over the drips. Great, thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Which do you prefer, big cells or small cells? Um, so there's quite a contrast between them. Great, thanks so much for watching everyone. Bye.